I'm no longer limited to what everyone has believed because now I know there is a new truth, a new reality, and God law supports that. So knowing that, you know, doing this argument stage is just for ourselves, but then it's important. Go back to what you want and declare it with power. And then, as Jerry did, give thanks and release knowing it is already so. While keeping up regular spiritual practice of doing prayer treatment and of meditation is a great way to keep those spooks away. Because they're really shadows that melt away with the sunshine of love and truth. Sophocles, a Greek playwright, once said, one word frees us of all the weight and pain of life. That word is love. That word is God, is power. You know, I always think of the story of Jesus when he was told that Lazarus had died. And he went to the tomb and he was confronted with fear, the fear of death, the fear of Lazarus' relatives. And they even told him, don't roll away the stone. And I think that many times we have stones that are kind of obstacles in our mind, and we're afraid to roll them away. But Jesus didn't listen to that. He raised his thought above the fear of the moment. And he said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou always hear me. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. Well, in the Bible it says... You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, which implies, of course, that there is a truth, which automatically is demonstrated when we call upon it. Ernest says the spiritual causation is in reality the invisible end of every objective fact. So what he's saying is something quantum physicists are also saying, is that the object, the circumstance, is a result. It's not the cause. And so that implies, of course, we can change the cause and change the result. In quantum physics, we could say about this circumstance with Lazarus, I know that the electrons, which have settled into the possibility of death, are not stable, but are moving energy, for everything is. I know that these electrons exist out of time and space, because time and space is just a man-made idea. And so I now set a new possibility in motion, that of life. And by this observation, if Jesus said it this way, with his intention, the waves of the electrons then collapse into a different possibility. Well, it's, it's just amazing to me what quantum physics is saying because it's backing up what we believe in so many ways. And Reverend Dar recommended to me the self-aware universe, how consciousness creates the material world. It's by Amit Goswami. Well, I started reading it, and I thought, okay, Dar, because this is not easy. <laughs> it's like that other book I just read, and <laughs> I think it's going to take some work here. <laughs> but, but it's also powerful, because it really explains by scientific experiments what we believe. It explains that there is there are infinite possibilities, and that things that appear set in cement, that appear unchangeable, are not. That everything is changeable. 
So the way I understand the quantum physics is that the basic elements of life, the electrons, are composed of what they call probability waves. Fuzzy possibilities with no boundaries outside of time and space. And that our observation, our consciousness, our intention collapses these waves into particles in a particular position. So that's what the quantum physicists say, that it takes our observation to take this sort of fuzzy thing with all the possibilities to um, put it into um, a particle state. Well, it can always be changed. Dr. Goswami says, if initial conditions do not forever determine an object's motion, if instead every time we observe them there's a new beginning, then the world is creative at the base level. That's a very, very powerful statement. In my words, I would say that everything is changeable and there are no unchangeable preset conditions and we can change things by observing them with intention, with the intention of a desired outcome. Intention is the directed and pur purposeful thoughts and feelings about something. Wow, you mean things that look like they cannot possibly be changed and that rational thinking says they can't? can really be changed? Yes. So what if you have an incurable disease? That's what you've been told. If initial conditions do not forever determine an object's motion, those ever moving electrons can take what looks like an impossible disease and change it back into health. Well, you might say, hey, too late for me. You know, I've had all the uh, diagnoses from the doctors. I've done all the things, and it's hard to believe. Yes, it is hard to believe, but it's true. And I've told you about the one personal experience I had with that, where my friend Dr. Jack Holland when he was 35, had cancer, and it spread all over his body. He was down to 93 pounds, and he's 6'4". And his mother took him to a quote-unquote healer who talked about the mental equivalent. What you believe is what you receive, and that you can change your thinking and change your life. And they gave him the little booklet by Emmett Fox, The Mental Equivalent. Well, he didn't want to read it because he didn't believe in that nonsense. He was a very left brain scientific kind of guy, right? And his mother's like, read it. What do you have to lose? You know, so he read it and he got excited about it. 